Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Utility Sports. Today, we've got a fun one and one that's been asked for a few times already on the channel. That is a Los Angeles Chargers team mock draft. We're going to be covering three rounds in this one. And before we even jump into it, things I want to look for for the LA Chargers, I either want to grab a tackle or an edge in the first round, come back, try and grab a guard in the second round, maybe a tackle in the second round if I don't manage to grab one in the first round, and then fill out that third round with either that guard or tackle the edge position is probably going to have to be a round one or a round two pick, most likely, uh, just based on the talent in this draft. So we'll kind of see where we're looking at. The big question for me is Melvin Ingram. Will they bring him back for his age 32 season? He's out on free agency this offseason. I really just don't see it. To be completely honest here, we see Trevor Lawrence go first overall. Zach Wilson actually goes second overall. Justin Fields obviously did not have a great game in the national title game. We see the receivers go back to back. That's something we could expect. Actually, the receivers go three in a row. Pitts to Carolina. Okay, Quiddy Pay goes off the board. That is one thing I was watching for. And now here we are with the Los Angeles Chargers first pick in the first round. Interesting here. Trey Lance is on the board. Obviously, Chargers are not looking at Trey Lance. Justin Herbert, what an incredible breakout season as a rookie. I did not see that coming. I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, him at Oregon, their offense, I thought that he was kind of a product of it. I, there was just something a little bit off when I watched him. But this past year, the Chargers, he got opened up. Obviously, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, two great targets to throw the ball to as well. He looked great. He stood in the pocket, took a ton of hits, was able to deliver through contact in the face of contact, on time, on target. A lot to build off, honestly, for the LA Chargers. I did not expect that. However, he broke the rookie touchdown record threw for about 4,500 yards and was just absolutely brilliant. Did not start the first game of the year and still had such success. Not really what I had expected coming into the season, but now after getting to see him for a year in the NFL, he's going to be a guy to build around for the LA Chargers. So for me now, I'm looking at this and one thing, to mo there's, there's a couple things to monitor actually. The offensive tackle position is huge for me. It's absolutely huge. And Gregory Russo has continued to fall. Now, is he falling? Uh, is this just like some, you know, rumors that we're hearing about him going to fall maybe in the draft and then he still stays in the top 15? Very possible. I mean, the guy was so good at Miami, opted out this year. Obviously, that is something uh, that the Chargers, I think, should look at because they need to replace Melvin Ingram. They need to put a guy across from Joey Bosa, help him get to the QB a little bit more often by pulling some of the double teams off of him. However, here with where they're at, there's a big trio. Samuel Cosme, Rashawn Slater, and Christian Derisa. Now, which one of these three would I prefer to go with? I, I think I'm going to have to draft a tackle here. Just looking at the strength of the board with Quiddy Pay no longer on the board for me, offensive tackle is the way I feel like I have to go based off the value of some of these players. Cosme was high, kind of fell a little bit. He's back up here. I just don't really think that he is the exact answer at that left tackle position. So for me, it's between Derrissaw and Slater. Slater is kind of a late riser out of Northwestern. Uh, gives you a lot at that left tackle position. It's going to be a franchise guy there. However, I think Christian Derrissaw is the safest pick. I think he's going to be the guy the LA Chargers ultimately go with because everything should be in the best interest of Justin Herbert, protecting him, giving him weapons. He already has the weapons right now. You get to grab Derrissaw one pick in front of the Minnesota Vikings, who are also going to be looking at a tackle more than likely. I like that selection a lot. Christian Derrissaw is a very, very safe pick, was very successful at Virginia Tech, deserves to be a top half of the first round type of player. And we see that here with him going pick 13 to the LA Chargers. So now for me, the one thing I'm trying to watch is the edge position as we continue to go on here into the second round. Obviously, the Chargers do have their second round pick this year right there at pick 45. And we've seen quite a few edges go off the board. Jalen Phillips flew off, Aziz Ojolari flew off. And now, interesting enough here, we come in, Landon Dickerson goes one pick in front of us. Not really the greatest situation, uh, to be honest with you guys, but it's okay. We're here, we got the biggest need we had at offensive tackle. Edge is still a very big need, in my opinion. Very, very big need. Javante Williams is here. I actually really like Javante Williams as a running back. Obviously, he's not going to fit for the LA Chargers, uh, but I do really like him. Trayvon Merrig is here. I think he's probably the best safety in the class. However, I, I'm going to give Nasir Adderley one more year to come into his own, especially with a healthy Derwin James. Maybe that looks a little bit different. So 
uh, let's look at the uh, interior offensive line. Wyatt Davis is a guy to watch. Uh, did he go off the board actually already? Okay, he did 35 to Miami. He has an injury that he sustained in the national title game. That'll be something worth monitoring. Creed Humphreys here. Deontay Brown is here. Josh Myers is here. Now, the interesting thing is some of these guys are centers. So are you going to be able to grab one of these guys with the idea that he can kick into guard? Or do you want to keep him at center? Like, that's, that's a little tough to me. Deontay Brown, he could be an option. Let's go look at the edge position real quick. That is one I said I wanted to look at. Basham Jr. is here. Jason Away is here. Now, Away is someone who's interesting to me. However, Quincy Roche is here. I have a feeling I might be able to grab Quincy, Quincy Roche in the third round. I really like him. We've actually uh, seen him go as high in the first, as the first round in some of our mocks earlier in the channel. He would be a guy I'd be uh, really interested in grabbing later. So now if we go back to the interior offensive line, I think I'm going to go Creed Humphrey. I think that he's the best interior offensive lineman available. We need to bulk up. We need to help our run game uh, for the LA Chargers here. Uh, I'm using we for our fans, obviously, uh, for the fans of the LA Chargers. I am not a Chargers fan myself, but Creed Humphrey is going to be the selection. Uh, you'll figure out the guard center thing. Like I said, that's not my biggest concern. Usually guys for our centers can kick to guard easily. It would be more concerning going the other way around. But I think there, that's a, a no-brainer selection. We see Basham and away go. Javante Williams finally goes off the board. Hamilcar goes, okay. Interesting. Brevin Jordan goes off the board. And Roche goes to the Jets. Not really what I wanted to see. Would not hate seeing that in real life, though, as I am a Jets fan, but not what I wanted to see here for this mock draft. Now let's go back to all real quick and just look at the state of the board. Obviously, cornerback is a need as well. They uh, traded Desmond King this year. We have Richie Grant here, Tyler Shelvin. I don't think that the interior defensive line's a need with Lamar, or uh, sorry, with um, Linval Joseph there. LeCount the third is here as well. That's a, that is a possibility. I had talked about the safety uh, situation. Let's go and look at that wide receiver position real quick. All right, here we are. We have Seth Williams, Sage Surratt. Daz Newsom, I wouldn't hate Daz Newsom. I, I think he's a little early here, though, for this. I think he's more of a fourth-round receiver out of UNC. Um, there's not really anyone I'm seeing that I would be in love with on the wide receiver room. Obviously, I could use a third wide out. Uh, but then they go in uh, with three offensive players in their first three picks, and that's just not what Tom Telesco usually does. Usually, at least four – or five of his seven selections come on the defensive side of the football. I think that trend will play through here as well. Shaka Tony was down here. That is something interesting to me as well. Penn state guy. Um, yeah, I see, this is the issue with passing on that edge position. Like I said earlier, however, at pick 13, it's a little bit of a tight situation to really reach on one of those edges. If it's not quitty pay, I think that there's not a lot of drop off there between 13 and about 28, 29, what you could get. So maybe the Chargers would be interested in a trade-down situation. If they want to grab one of those edges, that would be something to monitor. Also, uh, maybe a guy like Marcus Golden comes in in free agency for a year. Not really what you necessarily want or you know would love to see, but I think that that is a possibility to bridge it for a season, give you a cheap option. Michael Carter is here, and Kenneth Gainwell. Both of these guys I really love, actually. Um, Michael Carter is uh, really, really quick, uh, changes direction really well. I really love him out of the backfield. Kenneth Gainwell, Austin had actually told me quite a bit about him. He's the other co-owner of this channel here with me. Kenneth Gainwell catches the ball out of the backfield like a menace. Had over 60 catches two years ago. Wasn't opt-out this past season. Uh, he had accrued over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. And if you guys haven't watched him, go watch him now. He is an absolute beast. I just don't see them going running back, though. But Eckler's been injury prone so I wouldn't maybe rule it out but I think they would maybe wait until the fourth round to do so let's go back to that cornerback position Israel Mukwamu here it makes some sense I, I just feel like they have to go edge but there's not one I specifically love is there one that would make sense based off of Tom Telesco's draft history I don't think that there's necessarily one they, I think they maybe would look at grabbing Rumpf later in the draft but I don't see it here 
Hmm. Maybe they stay with Duke and go with Dumakeji, Victor Dumakeji out of Ju- out of Duke. I think that that makes some sense. Let me know in the comments below what you would do uh, with pick 77 here with how the board's fallen. Uh, I don't think QB makes any sense, of course. Running back, it's hard to not mock one of these two because I think that those are some of the best players yet on the board. I don't like the wide receiver pool we have. I don't think there's much drop off. They don't need to go into your offensive line again. Uh, we're at the edge position here. There's no linebackers really. I'm looking for someone who's somewhat athletic. If I'm the Chargers, someone who can stand up and also rush with the hand in the ground, a little combination of both. I'm going to mock Victor Dumakeji here. I think that that makes the most sense for the Chargers. You have to grab that edge position. Maybe Marcus Golden still does come in for your Dumakeji is not going to be a guy who's going to be extremely impactful early on. Uh, but nonetheless, he's going to be a guy that's able to fill that position for them. They need to do that. Uh, and for me, looking at the, what the Chargers were able to get this year uh, in this mock draft, they, oh, we actually have a we have pick 97. I was unaware of that. We have another third round pick. I love that. I'm going to go grab Kenneth Gainwell. G- Gainwell makes all the sense in the world here at pick 97. He is one of the best running backs in this class. Uh, or could arguably end up being the best running back. Uh, kind of reminds me of Alvin Kamara when I watched him. Uh, I don't think he'll be as good as Alvin Kamara, but his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield uh, runs nice crisp routes. I think he's going to be a really good running back in the league. And now here you see, I grabbed Christian Derrissaw at pick 13, get that offensive tackle to protect, protect Justin Herbert. I got Creed Humphrey also to bulk up that offensive line. Uh, a little bit of help on the interior there. Derrissaw and Humphrey both coming in as rookies. Uh, really, really improved that LA Chargers line. Those were two of the biggest needs for me coming in. Uh, the edge position was a huge need. I went with Victor Dumakeji there. Gives you a guy who's a combo athlete who can uh, stand up, put his hand in the ground, does a lot of different things for you, and gives the Chargers a little bit of flexibility next to Linval Joseph, Joey Bosa, Jerry Tillery there. And at pick 97, Kenneth Gainwell, I felt he was the best player on the board. I almost took him at 77, to be honest. He fell to 97 to me. I absolutely love the value there. If you guys haven't watched him yet, go watch him right now. He is an incredible, incredible player. His tape really stuck out to me, and I think that he's going to be a really good running back in this league. I would love for the Chargers to grab him, give you a long-term replacement to Austin Eckler, who has struggled with injuries, is going to get more expensive as time goes on. Kenneth Gainwell comes in, fills those shoes, gives you a nice backup option. Obviously, they have Justin Jackson there. But I just think that Kenneth Gamewell is an improvement over that. He's going to be a long-term quality running back in the NFL. Really love that for them. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about this LA Chargers mock draft. Hope you guys enjoy, and we'll catch you in the next one.